So I believe we are all here. The cast of characters is all here. It's just uh, five o'clock, so I'm going to call the meeting to order. Uh, at the moment, we have uh, we have no guests. Uh, we do have uh, we do have Victor and Dorinda as usual. Um, are there any amendments to the agenda? Uh, only ones that I uh, sent yesterday in the amended agenda. Did you get that? The yes. okay. Yes. Peter, I just want to give a quick update under other business about a uh, conversation I had with um, the new executive director of CB Fiber. Okay. And uh, Steve, you wanted to be recognized? Yes, Peter, thank you. Um, I just want to let uh, uh, everybody know that uh, I'm going to be resigning from the select board effective immediately. Um, I have a lot of personal reasons, but uh, anyway, I, I figured that I should do this right now. So it's effective immediately anyway. And I thank you all. Glad to have worked with you. Glad to have worked with you, Steve. Well, Steve, I'm very sorry to hear this news. I have thoroughly enjoyed being on the board with you. Thank you. Yeah, yes, thank, you for thank you for your service. Yeah, so I, I, I agree. How many years has it been, Steve? I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Too many to count, perhaps? It's been at least 10 years. I'm thinking maybe a, a 11 years, Steve. Wow. Right. So probably would be 12 at the end of my term in March. And you were foreman for how many of those? Not foreman. What's the word? Road commissioner. <laughs> Road commissioner? Yeah. For what? How many years? I don't know. I, I, I never kept track of that. Wow. You know, so, Steve, and I, mean this, and I mean this sincerely, and I, I understand you probably want to take a break, but we would welcome your participation in any of our meetings in the future if there's something on the uh, agenda which is of interest to you. You're okay. not... You're not leaving town, right? No. I am not leaving town. There you go. There you go. Thank Good. you for everything you've done for the town, Steve. Thank you. Yeah, bye. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And bye bye. <laughs> See you <at> <laughs> Good luck. All right. Thanks. So what bye, I always bye, say, bye. what I always say is hasta luego, which means until we meet again. It doesn't mean goodbye. So there yeah. you go. Okay. okay. Thank you, Steve. Good night. Thanks, Dave. Good night. Well, that's disappointing. Well, uh, I, I was afraid that was coming, but me too. Um, can I just make a statement that I will be gone for our next select board meeting, and so there, and I'm going to be overseas, so I won't be in the time zone to even join. So will we have a quorum at the next meeting is the question. Randy and Phil, are you planning on being there? Yeah, I'll be here. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be away, but I plan, still plan to attend, so. Yeah, and I'll be there. I mean, barring a catastrophic. Okay, because then, Randy, you're going to have to attend. Yep. <laughs> unless we have someone appointed between now and then. No, uh, which we won't, which we definitely won't. Right, we oh. won't. Right, okay. No, I'll make sure to attend. Okay. Where are you going, Liz? We're going to Europe. But where? Oh, we're going to Italy and Switzerland and Poland. Nice. Yeah. It'll be a nice little trip. Yeah, it's family. We've got family over there, except for Italy. So Italy, we're it's just the two of us for like four or five nights. So. And then we're meeting our kids and seeing cousins and all that. So it'll be fun. You're not uh, you're not driving any tanks around near the Polish Ukrainian border, are you? No. Uh, that's no. My brother in law is it works for the Swiss government and he he lives in Poland, so we're going okay. to see him. Well, good for you. Have yeah. a good trip. Thank you. We leave next <laughs> week. So if you need anybody to supervise your boys while you're gone, just call me up. I'll go over and check on them. <laughs> They're not living with us, <laughs> and they're going to join us. So. Oh, okay. You're safe. Okay. All right. 
Okay. Um, so we need to move right along and go into executive session. Is somebody willing to make that motion, please? I'll move it. Then we move to second. executive session. Okay. And the second? Two second it, Phil? I second it. Okay. Thank you. So it's been moved and seconded to go into executive session. Uh, hey, for um, PSA. Wait. Three one three eight three to discuss appointment and employment of an employee. Well, uh, hold on. Just uh, you have to make in that motion. You have to decide who's going to be in the executive session. Oh right. You, you, you got ahead of me. Well, ahead of me. I guess Vic uh, and Phil and Randy. I'm recommending that uh, <laughs> that uh, Dorinda be there, and Sarah, you would probably prefer not to be there. Is that true? I would. I would prefer not to be there. Okay. But that fine. means Dorinda's going to have to drive the boat. Okay. Oh, put it over. Wait, what about Vic? Yeah. yeah do you want Vic definitely needs to be there. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. So are you going to pass it over or? I am going to make Dorinda town treasurer. She is going to be the host. There you are. Make Dorinda, okay, so yes, to, change host. We need to vote before we... Uh, Yep. Before we actually do this. So all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we're in. Thank you. Okay, wait a minute. I have to pause recording. Yeah. Recording stopped. Don't forget Orca. Kill Orca. Uh, yeah, I got to kill. Uh, um, actually, I, did you give me the host thing? Wait a minute. Yeah, I did. Um, you are now the host. We did. We did decide in executive session, and it doesn't need a. It doesn't need a motion. But uh, Phil, Randy, and Victor are going to interview uh, all the candidates. Hopefully uh, next week, Victor's going to call and and set up the appointments. They're going to take place in person at the town clerk's office. Um, and uh, we agreed on a. Uh, we agreed on a on a salary range. Um, so we're going to start the process, and then if we need to, if we need to have a second round of interviews, we will. If there's one clear lead candidate, we probably won't have a second round of uh, second round of interviews. And I think that's that's it for the result of uh, result of the executive session. Advertising the select board position. Yep. Uh, yep. Yes, I would say in all the. Uh, in all the usual places, I'm a, I'm against. I, I mean, do we do we need to put it in the paper of record? I suppose we do, right? Uh, within somebody stepping off a board, there needs to be a posting within ten days. I mean, it's supposed to do it as you're supposed to try to fill it as fast as possible. So tomorrow, I will. Uh, you know, you that is your paper of record. You probably should do it. We'll put it on front porch forum, the website, and post it around town. Yep, that sounds good. So just just to remind everybody, it does need to be a uh, a town resident, obviously. Yes, absolutely. Okay, thank you, Sarah. Well, you will take care of that. That's yep. my job as a select board assistant. That's right. That's right. You're not resigning yet, right? Not becoming yet. A, becoming a resident of Poland. Not yet. <laughs> thank you. Um, so the next item on the agenda is a highway department update and included in that is determining compensation for interim co-road foreman Vic Dwyer and, and Gary Lamel, uh, action likely. So, um, and then review and possible approval of VTAOT grant and aid application to pay for ditching action possible. So Victor, you're on for, uh, for the second part, not the first part. We are on for the whole thing. Go ahead, charge ahead. Um, yeah, we gotta just fill out that uh, form at uh, Vintent. Uh, it's a grant for, uh, I think it's up to $20,000 with 25% uh, um, uh, participation by the town. And uh, we gotta, right now we have two or three tentative places we could do it. Yep. So I gave the form to, oops, Sarah's got a question. 
let's uh, can you when you say a couple of places you can do it, could you explain exactly what work would be paid for by the grant or the public? Okay, so if we had to replace a culvert uh, or if we were doing ditching or uh, doing the uh, stone fill, um, and uh, which includes uh, hydro seeding and stuff like that. Thank you. Yeah. And then, do you want to move on to the other uh, news from the uh, road department? Sure. Yes. We have another truck down, um, which is a good one. Uh, um, we got radiator fluid leaking out. Uh, we thought uh, they thought it was. Uh, um, going into the engine, uh, like a, uh, head gasket or something, but it wasn't, it was leaking in, but it is leaking into the leaking out of the uh, transmission cooler, which is behind the, uh, radiator. And, um, so they took it down to, uh, this was on Shane's last day. They took it down to Bootsy's, but, uh, so it's down there and, um, but they're having difficulty finding that cooler uh, items to repair that. Uh, it also had a, uh, it, you couldn't lift the body and, but they did get that temporarily fixed anyways. Okay. Um, what was wrong? What next was truck's wrong? coming by. We're just working with one truck. What, what truck is down? Uh, the one we're not trading. <laughs> you said you're working with one truck, one big truck, and we still have the smaller truck, right? Yeah, but that has all the hydro seeding stuff in it or chloride stuff might have to go in that. So it's, you know, pretty, you know, it's not very good for ditching. Right. Well, does that mean, does that mean potentially we should be hiring a truck or two? Uh, we can. If we get that far, we will. Yeah, we should. Yes. Yeah. And that has been mentioned. Because... You know, if you only if you only have one truck, that's a lot of time that the that the excavator is sitting there waiting for the truck to go and come back. Well, it's not really that bad because you're we're just hauling down the hill. Less than all, all, I'm, all I'm saying is, I understand, Peter. <laughs> well, we will do that. Hiring a truck, if that's what we're we're going to be challenged, we're going to be challenged to do the work we need to do this uh, right. this summer in particular and right. you no know, if heaven forbid the excavator breaks down i you know we just have to be ready to do whatever we have to do my yeah. under, my understanding is that that transmission cooler is a is a water the, the cooling is the actual coolant from the engine and then the transmission uh fluid runs through the runs through the cooler also right, right. correct so it's it's antifreeze that's leaking out of the cooling loop from the engine, but it's leaking inside that cooler. Basically. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Let's go with that one. Yep. Jesus. Hey, the other thing we got is uh, Fairfield, the people that uh, they sent us a contract and Dorinda sent it back in. It was 3,500 bucks a week. I think it was August 8th or through the 19th. And and uh, I see Dorinda shaking her head. That so I guess that's it. But it was for thirty five hundred bucks a week. And then the, and Shane called me this morning and said that Casey called him and said it was going to be another thousand a week. But I know Dorinda tried to get a hold of him. I don't know what 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 her answer was. So I called I called there. They didn't call me back this afternoon. However, I'm looking at the contract and the cover letter that they sent. And it says 3500 pre-book price, which I'm assuming we pre-booked, and yes. 4500 if it hasn't been pre-booked. So I don't know if there was a mix-up in message there, but we pre-booked, and I'm assuming we're going to get it at that 3500 But their new rate is 4500 but that's what I want to confirm with that woman Um and I'll try her again tomorrow if I don't hear back from her. What are we renting? A mower. 
Oh, oh, road. okay. The mall on the side see. of the road. Yep. Oh, okay. I got it. I, I, I didn't, I didn't get that part of it. Okay. Yeah, because I had on my list to ask about the roadside mowing. So we're gonna. The plan is to rent the mower, and our guy guys are our limited guys are gonna operate it. I know. Yeah, that, that's true. Yep. Okay. And then the other thing we uh, went out and got a uh, price to put those culverts in uh, center road. Mm -hmm. Yep. And. Uh, one one uh, contractor came back with uh, um, for the six culverts was seventy one thousand, Brenda. Almost seventy two. It was seventy two thousand dollars. Yeah. Eleven. Yeah. Almost twelve thousand dollars a culvert, but that included that included everything, and then the second bid is uh, was for. 8,000, which sounded real good, but they don't have any traffic control in it. Um, they, we have to deliver the pipes to them, and that gets confusing because uh, we could hold them up or be holding us up because uh, um, we won't know exactly what they want for pipes. I mean, we just can't. There's a lot of pipe, and we just can't, you know, dump it somewhere. They, they want it. They want it. To, they assumed that that company assumed we were going to deliver it right to where the culvert's being replaced. And I just okay. that's. But the difference is the difference is a difference of seventy one thousand to eight thousand. No, no. no. seventy one thousand to uh, forty fifty thousand roughly. Yes. Okay, so for 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 twenty one thousand dollars, uh, it doesn't make us. Does it make sense for us to figure out how to deliver the culverts to them or have somebody deliver the culverts to them? Oh, I could buy a trailer for 21000 <laughs> I can drag it with my bulldozer for 21000 <laughs> uh, uh, Victor, uh, there's also a, a bullet in here that says pricing does not include the excavating or placing of the outlet side of the culvert over bank. Can you talk about that a little bit? What's that? What do they What do they mean mean by that? Well, they're not going to take. They're not going down over that bank and take that that existing uh, uh, culvert that runs down the slope pipe. It runs down over the bank. They're not going to touch that. And they're not putting in. Uh, they're not. Uh, back when we talked about this last year, the idea we weren't going to take that. We weren't going to do anything with that culvert. We're just going to, we're not going to go down over the slope with elbows at the top and then a reverse elbow at the bottom and shooting it out like the design is. We we're just going to go across and then we were going to put a stone pad, uh, whatever it took on the uh, outlet and, uh, and the inlet. And the, the $8,000 per culvert or $50,000 doesn't include that either. So I guess the question is, what's your? I mean, is you know, I don't want to be penny wise and pound foolish. Is is the is the all in higher price the better deal? Well, you got the contractor. Well, I, I guess I can't say that, can I? I can't say who the contractor is, or I can. You can say who the contractor yeah. is. Sure. Yeah. Okay, the contractor that 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 would do it would do it all, and they would coordinate it. Because the idea uh, it was the paving, because they're doing the paving, and they would do it so that uh, roughly they would like the traffic uh, to drive over that uh, uh, reclaim about two weeks before they start paving to give it, an, even though they uh, they compact it and water it and grade it and everything, they give a, an extra couple of weeks because uh, the traffic actually uh does a lot for compaction hmm. so. so you're saying you're saying your recommendation is to go with the higher estimate for that reason and because they do all that other stuff which is, sounds like it could amount to real money i mean we would have to our excavator can't reach down those stitches we'd have to hire an excavator we'd have to hire somebody else to do that other work right it's not like we could do it well, let me make it clear. I don't think we're going to do anything with those culverts down over the bank. The ones that run down, there'll be some. There'll be those slope pipes will still be laying right in, uh, right in the slope. I mean, we'll we'll have to. Nobody's taking them out. 
uh, we'll have to just uh, make sure that our stone is over the top of them and uh, so they don't erode. Where's the second? You're evading, you're evading my question. My, my, my question is, which contractor do you recommend that we hire? The one at 71,000. And does that, does that fit in the, the plan and the, and the money that we have in the grant? Grant. Uh, we only have 185,000 in the grant. Right, but we also have money in the paving. I, I just wanna make sure, I just I wanna make sure that we have the price of the whole project covered between what's in, what's in our budget, what's in our, uh, what's in our paving fund, et cetera. I don't believe so. I don't believe so. I uh, thought we were going to use ARPA money. I, mean, I have a question, Vic. When it, it says on the Hutchins one that we will provide the pipe and the material uh, to replace the existing pipes, but they're not saying on there they deliver that to site. Yes. So, uh, Okay, so they met with me on Friday. Okay. Took them over and showed it to them, and that that would be included in that. Project. That would be included. Okay, I just wanted to make I sure. I mean, I can have them get, write that in there if you want. No, I just wanted to make sure because you said it wasn't included in the other one. The other yeah. thing is, would it be worth going? I know you like the idea of working with this other company, but I mean, should we go back to the other company and ask them? to put these things in there, include that in their quote? I did that tonight. Oh, I'm you here. did? Okay. Yeah. okay. The, guy, the guy had taken the afternoon off. That okay. was the bidder, the, 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 the bid at, uh, the yep. guy that prepares the bid. So, I mean, and I, and I know there are, there are unknown factors in this, but how much, how much in the hole do we think we will, are gonna be on this project? Uh, round numbers. Dorinda would have to. Dorinda, uh, what do we have in our paving fund? That's what I was just looking for. Um, let's see. We have. We have three hundred thousand. Two hundred and fifty-nine thousand. Okay. So. We got two fifty-nine and one eighty-five, right? So yeah. That's... Four hundred and forty-four thousand. If I did the math right, yeah. What do we think the total cost is going to be? I believe it. I think it's uh, right around four hundred and twenty thousand dollars with McCullough Hill Road. I can. We are okay then. It should be, but I, I, mean, I, I mean, if we have to dip a little bit into our ARPA funds, but you're not talking about spending fifty yeah. or hundred thousand of the ARPA funds. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. That's close enough. I'm just trying to keep keep track of the big picture here as we uh, as we move into this. This is a big project for us. Do we do we we've already purchased all of the culverts for this replacement, or is that an additional cost that we haven't looked at yet? Oh, we, um, yeah, I mean, it, as far the best of my knowledge is that that is correct. We have all the culverts for it. Yeah, I, well, I we purchased those culverts last year. That's yeah. what Shane Shane said. Told us that we had it all, and that's why we ordered them last year. Good. Anything else, Victor? Wait a minute. Do are you going to wait for him to go back to get more bids? Or are you going to vote on that? Are you going to vote on that on the culvert, or what are you going to do? On a seventy-one thousand. Anything right right now this minute? Do you do you need an answer on this now, Victor? It would be nice so we could move ahead. Uh, we've we've got to start. We've got to move ahead by the probably by the first of July. Yeah, but the contractor's going to want to the bid. The bid's only good for thirty days. So why can't we decide now? I think we can. Yeah. Okay. I think let's do it. Okay, somebody willing to make a motion? We don't we don't want to wait for Kingsbury to get back to Victor with the uh with the added inputs to their bids. We have another select board meeting to do this. We do, but it's gonna be right 
you know, it's going to be two weeks from tonight. Basically, that's getting pretty close to the. Yeah. Oh, I'll put the pressure on you, Peter. <laughs> hey, I don't. It doesn't. It's not no pressure on me. Good. Uh, good. I mean, that's the other good. thing we can do is the, the other thing we can do is, and I know I hate that this keeps happening, but I mean, we can have a fifteen-minute uh, special meeting when Victor gets uh, gets that information back. Right. Well, my advice is that you warrant a special meeting for next Tuesday. That way, you give everybody plenty of notice. And it may be you guys aren't going to do interviews until next week, though, right? You're not doing interviews this week. Monday and Tuesday, we're going to be doing the interviews Tuesday, maybe. So you could you could theoretically bring up a uh, warrant a special meeting for uh, that includes uh, also reviewing road uh, road foreman offers. So how about if you did it when did the special meeting Wednesday or something like that? Perfect. It's better to have more warning than less warning. Could we do something a little bit earlier at like a four o'clock on the Wednesday? Hold on. Let me see what I'll put. Wednesday is normally a planning commission meeting. Just don't interfere with that. Please. Do you, you mean it's, it's a warning it's public it's hearing at six o'clock? Okay, don't worry. This will be like it. Or they won't go over else. I can give them a different. I can give them a different link. I have a different account. So we're um, so we're yeah, talking four. about Wednesday the fifteenth at four p.m. Can you do? 4 yeah. PM? That's fine by me. I got the zoning hearing at yeah. I got the zoning hearing at six. Right. Yep. So we have to have. It's going to have to be a commitment from three members because I don't think Liz is going to be around. Right. Yeah, four o'clock works better for me, or even a four thirty works better for me than five. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Be, so four, we'll just do a four o'clock meeting. Does that work for all you guys? Give you some yes. time. Just, okay. Good. Yep. Thank you. Okay, because that way, that way we will be able to give the contractor at least at least two weeks notice and probably they won't be doing it on the first day of July either, but you know, they're going to need to, they're going to need to plan ahead. They're not going to want to hear one day before we expect them to start. Right. Good. Okay. Anything else? Uh, anything else, Victor? Um, no, I guess not. So do we need, Probably to probably to get it get it into the minutes, we should have a we do, we should have a motion that we're agreeing to pay uh, Victor for his extra time and Gary for his time uh, thirty dollars an hour. So moved. Is there a second? Yeah. Thanks, Randy. All in favor of that motion, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, I think we're good. I have a I have a question. Is this um, a limited number of hours or is this like whatever, or is there any kind of any kind of parameters to anything or just whatever comes in? So what did you, what did you discuss with Gary, Victor? Say that again, please. I didn't quite get how that. Many, well, Dorinda's question is, do, do I got Dorinda's parameters question. on how many hours this is going to be? Is it up to 20 hours a week for Gary and 10 hours a week for you, or what do we think it is? Um, with this uh, interaction with uh, these bids and stuff, it's, uh, it, takes, it takes a lot of time because somebody's always calling you back about it. So I think 20 hours is <laughs> I think Gary's staying right there for uh, the 40 hours. Oh, he won't get 40 hours because he had to, he didn't work today because he had to take his wife to the doctor's. But does he have 40 hours? I mean, assuming he isn't, he isn't operating any of the trucks or any of the equipment, does he have 40 hours of work to do? Oh, I think he's operating the equipment. He's running the excavator while they, uh, while Files is grading and him and uh, Felcher are. Uh, Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Well, that makes sense. I didn't realize he was operating the equipment. He can't drive the trucks, right? Does anybody know if he's got a CDL or anything? That makes a, you know, that we've got to have. Did you, I thought you asked. Doing, we've got to have accurate paperwork on file if that's what's happening here. Well, I thought that's what you did Monday when he filed out his W-2. 
I didn't ask anything about a CDL. I wasn't there, number one. Well, he's not. I mean, the last time we talked about this, I thought he wasn't operating the equipment or the trucks. He can operate the equipment without the CDL, but he can't drive the truck. He can drive the pickup, I guess. But he, he can drive the pickup, but not the big truck. Yeah. Well, he's going to run the excavator and, and the, he has to, the grader. Right now, I don't know as he's running the truck. Well, well he can't. Okay. The bottom right. line is he can't, unless he has a CDL. And if he has CDL, we need to have a copy of it and he needs to have a drug test and all the stuff. I thought that's what they did Monday. I assumed he had one. Because you know, they all said Monday, he went down to the town clerk's office and filled out, it was down there filling out his paperwork. Sorry. I wasn't there. Just to yeah. just to quote the minutes from the special meeting, you guys, it was they were to be in administrative functions only as co-foreman. Administrative, that was the word, administrative. Right. That's Not cool operating. So it sounds like, it sounds like the situation has changed. Yeah. I just want to be. I just yeah. want to be Yeah, it has. No, you changed it tonight. I didn't change it. I my idea was that he was going to be the foreman and he could do uh, anything. And like I said, he went down. No, there. that isn't what. No, that is not what we what we said. We said oh. administrative functions only. Yeah. So if he's they have another resignation then. <laughs> well, wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute, wait a minute. Not wait me, minute. not me. He may. He's, he, he just think Victor, he's all, I'm, all I'm saying is we need to agree and understand exactly what he's doing and that he has the correct paperwork, the correct right. license, the correct whatever to do it. And it sounds like we don't know that. So I think we need to find right. out right. pretty darn quick. If he has a CDL and <laughs> he's going to drive the truck, then, uh, then he does need to have a drug test, right? He does well, have a drug test. He does, but I would say if this is only going to be a four to six week maximum, I would assume position, I would limit him to just driving the pickup and not the big trucks okay. and let him use the heavy equipment. Then you don't have to go through all that. Right. I think that's pretty much what's going to happen. And, and, uh, I, uh, he, he, you know, because uh, Pelcher drives the truck, the only one we got running. He drives that if uh, if we have to. Yeah, okay. I think let's, we just need to be intentional make... about that communication with Gary. And I'd be fine with him operating the equipment and using the pickup truck for the for the duration of, of the interim uh, foreman. Um, we just need to be very specific with that communication with him to set that expectation. So are we good on that? Sounds like we are. Mm -hmm. I, I, don't Peter. That, I, I don't think that we addressed, um, uh, you know, potential uh, extension of time of Victor's duties through through that conversation. We kind of addressed Gary, but I don't think we had a discussion about Victor. No, we did not. So how much how much extra time do you think you're going to have uh, Victor through this process? I have no idea. As soon as that. Uh... I had like seven, seven hours yesterday, and probably a couple today. And then last last time, I, you know, if uh, last last week and stuff when nobody showed up, I had I was over there at five thirty, quarter of six every morning, and stayed till like eight o'clock when nobody when uh, the two days Shane didn't show up. So we're talking about twenty hours a week, roughly. I can hold it to that. That's what you want me to do. Well, I, I truly what you I want me to do the job. I'll do the job. I, I want you to have the flexibility to do what you need to do. I understand. I want to give Dorinda some idea of what we're uh, of what we're looking at here. Yeah. So I'm not I'm not suggesting that we that we say uh, you're limited me... twenty hours a week. If you and you and Gary between you uh, do this. That's what we need. That's what we right. need to be done. So, but I get. Does that answer your question, Dorinda? Does that give you an idea of what you're looking at? How, how about how about we do this? How about we we extend uh, we extend it to 120 hours for the for the duration here? And if we come upon um, you know 80 percent of that or something, we revisit the conversation. 
that's that's 20 hours a week for six weeks on average and it could be that he works 40 hours one week and then he two the next who knows depending on what the workload is that works that works for me i mean i i'm just i just want i don't want to pen him in and then he can't do what he needs to do so yeah all right is that fine with fine with everybody else liz phil yeah okay thank you so do we need to vote on that too right yeah yeah we should <laughs> Okay, I'll, I'll make a motion to extend the $30 an hour uh, offer to Victor for 120 hours, um, revisiting that conversation if we hit 80% of those hours and he projects that he's going to go over that. And $30 an hour for Gary um, working in a full-time capacity without operating the uh, CDL trucks um, for the interim duration. A second to that motion. I'll second it. But wait a minute. Don't, we don't know yet. I thought we still had to confirm with him that he had this. <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, that motion. That motion excludes the use of the dump trucks, Liz. That he would need a CDL for. So I'm sorry. I missed this. So we thought he. We know for sure he does not have a CDL. No, but what we're saying is, we don't want him driving the heavy trucks. We don't want to go through all the folder all of getting him certified to- No, I understand, but if he has a CDL, he can drive the truck, is that true? No, oh. we're saying no, that his job description is to pick up and- Okay, all right. And if it turns out he has a CDL and that he needs to drive the truck, then we need to, re then we need to reconsider that. But for the time being- Peter. Yes. Yeah. When you when you have the guy out grading and you only have Pelcher and anytime you do hydro seeding, Gary has Gary drove the truck and you know and and for uh, you know the distance between Steve's house and McCullough Hill, <coughs> I think that's fine. I will check and see if he has a CDL tomorrow. I I mean I. I can't the motion say if he has a let CDL. Let me talk, please. Wait don't a minute. Don't One please. Please. Go ahead, Victor. I did not intentionally, I mean, I think he has a CDL. I did not intentionally, uh, you know, just skip that. But honestly, on Monday, I asked, I went over early and they said that he was going down. He went down to the town clerk's office to do his WT2 form and all that other stuff. The last time we hired somebody, they went down and they had to do all that stuff. I think it was Steve McLaren that did it. So I thought it automatically, as soon as he got down there, every would be on what they were supposed to be. But then I didn't know Dorinda wasn't there. I'm not throwing Dorinda on the bus. It was just a calamity of errors. I will straighten that out tomorrow morning. Tonight, right after I get off here, I'll ask Gary what he's got. I'll do it tonight. Okay, but what... what... So we need to back up. What what's involved in in allowing him to drive the truck, Sorinda? He has to have a drug test. Well, that is your policy that they have to do it. If he gets a random check, I believe that it, you've got your hand up, Sarah. You're yeah. Gonna no, if you're gonna if you are going to be driving a municipal truck on the road, a CDL, you need to have a drug test by the. Uh, this is the Department of uh, a Dep U.S. Department of Transportation rules. So that has no, you have zero control over that. If he's, that's it. Okay. Uh, the drug, a drug test and the physical. Um, yeah. The, phys the physical is part of the drug it, to maintain your um, license. Right. Your CDL license is part of the physical is part of that. And to be quite practical, the, uh, we had such a backlog and there is a huge backlog because of all the testing for COVID, maybe it's E somehow and all these drug, te drug testing centers. So we're not getting the results. We used to get like a 24 hour turnaround from Concentra. Now Concentra ships out all those uh, tests to Philadelphia and we, it's a long turnaround. So it's not as smooth an operation as it used to be. Correct. So I am against just going wink, wink, nod, nod, and letting them drive the trucks and not follow the rules. I don't think that's a good idea. It will not happen. Okay. It will happen. 
Well, I, like I said, tonight, I'll, I'll take care of it tonight, right after this meeting. I'll call him. Okay, so the, so the motion remains that he is going to drive the pickup truck and operate the equipment. Right. right, Victor? That is correct. Going forward, that is what we will do. And if he has a CDL and he needs to drive the heavy truck, then we need to, we're going to have a special meeting next Wednesday. We can reconsider it then. Right. Okay, so the, so the motion the motion stands that uh, and I'm going to re restate this, Randy. So if I don't get it right, raise your hand. But we're uh, we're hiring uh, Gary on an interim short term basis for thirty dollars an hour on a full time on a full time basis, with the understanding that he's going to potentially drive the pickup truck and operate the equipment, but not drive any of the heavy trucks, and that Victor. Uh, will be authorized up to 120 hours at $30 an hour for this for this interim period with the understanding that if he gets up to 80% uh, of that number, we need to revisit it. Does that cover it, Randy? Yep. Okay, so that is the motion, which is- Comment. I'm sorry? Nothing. Okay, so that is the motion that's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Who seconded it? Well, okay. <laughs> Procedurally, I made a motion and I think Randy seconded to yep. set the rate of pay. Right. But we never acted on that. No. So I'm going to withdraw that first motion. Okay. Randy, you withdraw your second to my first motion, right? Sure. Okay. And then Randy made that other motion. I am seconding that motion. Ah. I've already voted. So now, okay. we're, now we're clear. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Good. Thank you for straightening us out. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. You're good, Sarah? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you all for your patience and understanding. Thank so, you. Moving right along. Review and approval of amendment to the ongoing hazardous mitigation grant program for the buyout of 28 Rich Road. Uh, the voluntary transaction Thanks. agreement with the property owner and a subgrant agreement with the Two Rivers Ottaquichi Regional. Peter, you sub missed, you're on the missed, wrong, you missed the, the DRB. Thing. That's why Sandy's here. Oh, I did. I'm sorry. It must have been that yellow highlighting that confused me. Oh, I apologize, Sandy. Approving the resolution to create a development review board to replace the zoning board of adjustment and permit review duties of the planning commission and appointing members from the planning commission and the zoning board of adjustment to serve on the new DRB effective July 1 action likely. So Sandy, you're on, I'm sorry. That's fine. Um, when I uh, attended your meeting a few weeks ago, uh, we had a draft resolution and where that was left was I would um, discuss with the planning commission members to see if there were two planning commission members who would serve and also talk with the, with the zoning board of adjustment and see if they would be willing to serve. I did that, two planning commission members stepped up, myself and Mitch Oshesky, and all of the zoning board of adjustment members agreed to serve either as the uh, as members of the new board or as alternates. In particular, Roger Hurt and Charlene Bull asked to serve as alternates. They did not want to serve on the new DRB. Otherwise, it would be the same um, same body. And then I just rather randomly um, assigned the terms for those. So they would be staggered going forward. It would be three years terms, but initially they would be staggered. Okay, so who are the who are the people from the ZBA that we're actually appointing? Or we're appointing all of them, but two of them are alternates? Yes. Um, I have Larry, it. Larry, Larry Rooney, right? Yeah, sorry, I, I should pull, pull it up. I drafted the resolution, but I didn't. Um, Stacey Skadberg. It's uh, Peter Raymond and Stacy Scadberg. They would each have three-year terms. Mitch Oshesky and myself would have two-year terms. And Larry Rooney would have a one-year term. And Roger Hurt and Charlene Bull would be alternates, each with three-year terms. And that's 
identified in the resolution I provided to you. Thank you. And Sandy, you say Larry Rooney already sits on uh, the Board of Adjustment or where does where does he? Yes, sit he's now? currently on the Zoning Board of Adjustment. Okay. Questions, anyone? Concerns? Motion? Bill? Yeah, I, I move that we um, adopt the resolution establishing the uh, DRB uh, with the membership as specified uh, by Sandy. And you said it was, it's in that resolution anyway, right? Okay, yeah. getting confused between the first one and the second one. Um, okay. And is there a second, please? I'll second. Okay, thank you, Liz. So it's moved and seconded to approve a resolution to create the Development Review Board and replace the Zoning Board of Adjustment and permit review duties of the planning commission and appointing the uh the members as outlined for the terms as outlined all those in favor of the motion please say aye aye, aye. anybody opposed okay thank you sandy thank Good you that's just, yeah, we're going to be in the just, new world <laughs> new world it's effective july 1st which is our yeah. new fiscal year yeah, yeah. Right. thank Perfect. you all thank you right thanks sandy okay. thanks sandy thank you. So now we are back to review and approval of the amendment uh, to the ongoing hazard mitigation grant. I already read it once. I'm not going to read it again. Uh, Sarah. Um, well, as you can see, this is something, this is just basically to keep the grant moving there. Uh, they've given us more money to do two things. One is uh, Jennifer Evans did sign, uh, already signed the uh, VTA. So sh all we need is a signature, uh, and maybe from the, when you make a motion to approve these, just um, make sure that you designate who can sign all of them in the office, whoever is coming in, who's ever in town. Um, and then otherwise, it's more money from the federal government for this initial stage of the buyout. And then it's uh, money, it's this money frees up uh, two rivers out of Quichi for them to give us more money to make up the difference in this in this uh, grant. This is just to purchase Jennifer's house at this time. Jennifer did express reservations when she came to sign the agreement. She's now worried and probably rightfully so that she, even if she's getting about 200 something thousand dollars that she um, will not be able to find anything anywhere for 200 something thousand dollars. And uh, she may withdraw. <laughs> Great. But she, make she has until closing. Later. I'm sorry? When does, when does she, I mean, can she withdraw at any time? I mean, she I don't want to get to the point where we're, where we're getting estimates and doing real work, and then all of a sudden at the last minute, she says she doesn't want to do it. Well, what, we can't do any of that until we own the property. And we, what, what this allows us to do is this allows us to proceed with the title search, which, um, which uh, you know, the federal government will pay for. And then we will have an attorney draw up closing documents. And when she comes down to close, that's it. And FEMA has assured us that they will get that, cut us that big check ahead of time so that we don't use any money out of our funds. That check will be waiting for us. So, so she can withdraw the, then. If she balks then, we've done other than other than your time and effort, which is not to be under, yeah. under uh, valued, but uh, we're not we're not pouring out any money to any subcontractors or asbestos abatement people or any of that. No, stuff. because we can't do it because we don't own the property and FEMA is very concerned about property. that. So okay. So this is uh, so that's that's where we are, and you know I kind of don't blame her. You know it's kind of a crazy market. You know she's got she's either going to be in the river or on the streets. Not an easy uh, not an easy choice. Yeah. Maybe she should have thought about that before she started the process. Wait, does she live there physically? physically? I don't know. Okay, I thought she didn't. Okay. I, I think she does live there uh, currently. Um, I have a question about this 25% match that I see. Yeah. It looks like the, the, um, the number that's attached to that's like 59,775, right. but the, the sub grant only allows for a maximum of $34,000. Yeah. 
Is the town on the hook for the, uh, the remaining? No, the town's not the hook for anything. I believe I thought I did the math. I thought I'd add it up okay to the uh, to the appraised value. If you don't, if you have any reservations, don't vote on it tonight. Pass over it. We'll take it up at one of our many special meetings. But I could you know just do the accounting together. But my understanding, I think what I the fifty nine sixty thousand plus uh, the new agreement the plus us seventy one seventy nine altogether. Because I, those guys are, what's Two Rivers out of Quichi giving? They're giving, do you have, no, I thought I had it right here. I, think, I, I thought Two Rivers was giving us 59,000, no? Well, we already have no, 20,000. We are not on it. Hello? Stop talking. I, I muted him. Is the oven on? Hey, Bob. Okay. <laughs> So we already have, Dorinda, how much money do we have sitting in the, that, how much money did we get out of that check, that account? It was like $20,000? The first we one, have, yeah. We already 20, have 20000 I think. We have $20,000 already sitting there. Then we have this other stuff from Two Rivers out of Quichi. Altogether, that should make up the match. But if you're unsure about it, I can add it all together. Yeah, Before I'm your just, time, Randy, we got twenty grand. it has been sitting there for like three years. Okay, so maybe that with this thirty-four, if that's you know, there's that put everybody 000. over the edge. Yep, I'm yep. just gonna end. That sounds okay to me. Yeah, I mean, my big, the only thing I was concerned with is that the town was going to be on the hook for the difference of that 34 and and the other, the other end of it. So if if we're covered, then I'm fine with it. Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. If you're if you're unsure about it, I can come back with a complete accounting for that. I just was. I, you know, I, I've been dealing with this for so long. I just kind of thought, oh, I got it all together. Well, let's um, work, since we're meeting Wednesday, let's let's just wait and make sure we have a real number and everybody can be comfortable. Does that make sense? That's fine with me. Okay. I mean, that doesn't hold anything up, does it? No. Mm -mm. No. Okay. Okay. Treasurer's report, action possible, Dorinda. I don't have anything really to report. I sent out the budget status report. Um, we are, there's a few things in here that I gotta, um, I think that are making it look worse than it is. A couple of grant things that shouldn't be in there, but, um, but we are like, we've got to be up around at least 90%. This says 94%. So um, we've got the whole month to go. Right. So you don't have any, uh, I mean, I was looking at that quickly. You, you, you don't have any guesstimate of how far in the hole we're going to be. Uh, not yet. I want to pull these. I just started to go through this. I just got this late yesterday afternoon. So I've got to go back and ask, um, figure out a couple of these numbers in here. But I think it's going to be over, especially if we incur um, these extra costs again, even the highway with the savings we have. The highway wages are already, you know, they're at 82 percent. Um, so with all the, I know we're saving in one respect, but we're also incurring in another respect. So, because we just went from 40 hour position to basically, you know, um, 80, 80 hours or whatever we use a month. I don't know. Because you've got two people now doing the job of the road foreman. Yeah, it's essentially 60 hours a week. I was going to say it's more like, so yeah, but yeah. Um, so here's, here's the question. And I know we discussed this before and I couldn't remember what we, what we concluded is, is there anything in our expenses that we can use ARPA money for to make up that overage? And if we can, we probably need to do it by the end of the month, right? Well, I mean, you don't make it up. The ARPA money is there for us to use. It's how we, we report it next year. So if we say that we use this money for employee retention, which we did already do that, then that's going to offset it. But that money's already in our bottom line. You don't actually put it into the budget. You can't change your budget numbers. Your budget is your budget. Yeah, 
yes, but we can, can we can't, I mean, we can't, we can't change the budget that the voters approved, but can't we? So you're going to be overspent in your budget, but you're going to have funds to cover it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good answer. That's fine. Have have we heard anything on the potential uh, reimbursement for mud mitigation costs um, that we've talked about through the state efforts? I haven't. I don't know if I think that was something that was being um, worked on um, from the highway department. Are you there, Vic? No, he's left. He's left. He just turned off his light. He's still tuned in. His name's on the list here. Oh, yeah. Rick, are you there? Yes. Yes. So did you hear that, that Randy's question about the mud mitigation, potential mud mitigation grant from the state of Vermont? One more time. I got interrupted here. I apologize for that. I'm sorry. Randy was asking the question. Have we heard anything on that potential um, nothing, nothing. money from the state of Vermont? Nothing. No. So the legislature's adjourned now. So that means either it doesn't exist or we haven't heard about it, right? Right. And I don't think, you know, I guess, uh, I guess somebody, uh, I guess the governor could or somebody in the, in the uh, Agency of Transportation, if they got some funds, could do it, but I don't think so. But I'll, uh, that's a good point. I can, uh, I can call the uh, Secretary of uh, Agency of Transportation tomorrow and see what, if there's anything in the, if anything's going on. It'd just be good to know. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. There was a lot of a lot of talk about that, and I haven't heard anything either, Randy, or I haven't seen anything in the press. Or uh, you have to believe if they were uh, they were going to do something, we would have heard about it. But you never know. And we spent seventy six thousand dollars on that. Right, right, right. Okay. Anything else, uh, Dorinda? No, nope, I think that's it. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so we are down to uh, other business. Um, I know uh, Elliot's here and he probably would like to hear about whether we're gonna agree to the, uh, the shed that the bandstand committee is proposing. I just did get a text from, hold on here, let me bring it up. I got a text from, uh, from Paul Baffa saying, Peter, not sure when the bandstand shed item may come up, but wanting to emphasize the practical and preferred location at the meadow edge by the woods to be relatively close to the gazebo. Otherwise, just looking for a green light. So what, what he showed me and we looked at was coming down from the old town garage up against the woods there before the woods ends like two thirds of the way down there. So it's relatively, it's, it's tucked into the woods, but it's relatively close to the bandstand. And you all received uh, uh, the sketch that he sent with regard to the design and the colors and, and whatever else. Um, and we've got, uh, we've got Elliot here. If anybody has any, uh, any other questions, I mean, again, this is a, what, it's an eight by 10 building, Elliot, sitting on blocks? I don't have the design up in front of me. You're muted, Elliot. Uh, yes, that's roughly the size. And we have a number of, uh, I guess you call it pieces of gear that we use when we do concerts at the bandstand. We have uh, rolled up sections of rug, uh, a couple of which are pretty heavy. We need those for the floor of the bandstand for acoustical reasons. Uh, during the off season and sometimes during the week, we store sandwich board signs that we put in various places out at I-89 Red Hen, uh, Route 12 to tell people that there's a concert on and those are quite heavy. 
uh, traffic cones. There is a frame that we use for the sponsor banner. There are a number of things that we have there that we have to pull out uh, six times a year during the summer. First concert this year is on July 6th. And um, it would be greatly appreciated. And, and all of the stuff has been stored in John Puleo's barn on Molly Supel Hill, and it can't stay there. Um, so we need to move it somewhere, and this seems to be the best solution. We're willing to construct the thing and be responsible for it, maintain it. And, um, you know, we hope we can locate it in that place because that is convenient from the bandstand. Any, any questions for Elliot, board members? I'm not a board member, but can I say something? Yes, you may. Elliot, you got to keep it to under 80 square feet or else you're going to need a zoning permit. Okay. I mean, 80 square feet is fine. Just don't go over 80 square feet. Okay. That's yeah, good. So, the, so the diagram that, that Peter sent out is eight by 12. So you'd want to reduce it to an eight by 10. Okay. Or, or, else you, or else seek a zoning permit, but that's just going to add time. Yeah. Yeah. We're hoping to do this in the next week or 10 days if we can. Ready for a motion? Someone? Approval. Approval. Okay. So the so the mo just to be clear, the motion would be uh, permission to construct an eight by ten, no no greater than um, eighty square foot uh, building in the location that was uh, was discussed and in accordance in general accordance with the diagram that was submitted. Other than that, it's going to be slightly smaller. Is there a second? Yeah, Dorinda, I'm sorry. I just had a quick question. Um, what about insurance on this building? Is this something that's going to have to be added to our policy? I would say I would say no. It's not our building. Right, it's not our building. So I just wanted to make sure that's clear. So There's no expectation on your part, Elliot, that the town's going to be insuring this building, right? No, the cost of the materials are going to be about fifteen hundred dollars. So, right. yeah, <laughs> there's no expectation, right? Okay. Yeah, and I mean, you have no you have no insurance policy on any of the stuff that's in there. You're not expecting us to insure that. I I can't imagine that the value of what's going to be stored there is any more than thousand dollars. Right. Yes. Right. No. So yeah, it's your it's your building. We're giving you permission to put it there. Yeah. Right. And this is just going to be sitting on patio blocks or something. Yes. Yeah, your blocks or patio blocks. Yes. So it could be, you know, could be removed relatively easily if it ever had to be demolished and removed. That's right. Or put on a trailer and removed. Correct. So um, it was. I'll second it. You're a second it. I didn't think we'd second it. Okay, yeah. thank you. So uh, any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay, Elliot, you're good. Terrific. And everybody, please come to the concerts. It's six Wednesdays in a row starting yeah, to look. Good lineup. It's going to be incredible. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So well, Elliot, will you, will you communicate with Paul just to save me having to respond to him so he knows what the story yeah. is? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Thank okay. you. Thanks, guys. Yep. Bye. Okay, so we have a, a, a litany of uh, minutes here that we need to approve. And I'm not sure everybody was here for all those. Oh, I'm checking. So uh, the May 3rd meeting, everybody was there. The uh, May 12th meeting was uh, Peter, Steve, and Liz, so we'll just have to crack that off the list. Um, the 17th, everybody was there except for Liz. <laughs> Where was I? I don't know. Oh, was uh, it an emergency one? You had some. Yeah, I think so. The 17th was just the 17th, um, but you weren't there. And the so that's where we are. And then the 24th, everybody was there. So you can do the 31st, the 24th, and the third in one motion, correct? Yes. But no one can do the 12th. Wait, why can't we do the 12th? 
because it was uh, it was a really I forget what it was oh, it was approving the filling stations outdoor consumption permit. It was a two minute meeting, so it was Peter, Steve, and Liz. And Steve. Oh, no we were the only three people there, right? Okay. Okay. So uh, was, oh, we need three people, don't we? Minimum. It's not even on. It's not even worn. So forget it. We're fine. Maybe I. Oh okay, yeah. So, so what yeah. we need is we need a motion for the thirty first, the twenty fourth, and the third, right? And the seventeenth. And the seventeenth. I'll move it that we approve the minutes of those dates. Is there a second? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Randy. So all those in favor of approving the minutes of the 31st, the 24th, the 17th, and the 3rd? Yep. Please say aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Okay, we've approved them. Good work. <laughs> so now, now we need to just approve the minutes for the 12th, correct? You can't do it. Oh, we'll never be able to. Okay, we're just ignoring that. So we're good. Yes. We're all set. Um, we've done the uh, bandstand thing. Uh, we need one thing we need to pay attention to now is Steve has been one of the regular signers of the uh, of the order, so he will no yeah. longer be doing that. So we got to be sure uh, the three of us at all least right. uh, sign the orders. I'll come by tomorrow on my way to work. Yeah, I'll be down in the morning. Okay, I will be down there tomorrow also. Yes. I just want to update you that uh, after all of that, Scott, uh, Sky uh, Barsh will not be holding her exercise classes at the or yoga classes at the, at the uh -huh. field. I know. What happened? Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> no good deed goes unpunished. She just wanted me to let the board know. So. Okay. No, that's that's good to know. Um, correspondence. Mm, no. I always send you the correspondence when I get it. I don't know. I know. I'm just trying to follow the agenda like a good person. Um, so I guess I guess just by the way of by the way of closing, we all need to think about uh, who. Yeah. Would Phil. If, Phil. Phil's got to want to talk, he wants a CV fiber update. Yeah, I've got him. I've okay. got him. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. I put you on. I put you on last, Phil. But we just need to be thinking about thinking about if we can think of anybody we can recruit uh, to be interested in the select board position. Um, I know Sarah Berger was interested, but she might not be interested right now. I think she might have, she could potentially have wanted to wait until um, someone's up for re-election and isn't running, but I can reach out to her. Okay. Okay. So what we'd be looking for is a letter of interest, right, Sarah? Yes, correct. Yep. Okay. Peter. Yeah, right. Peter. Yeah. Three people have texted me want to know how to how to get set up to, be, to, to, to do that. I told them they had to put in a letter to Sarah. Correct. Letter of interest. Yeah. Three people. What's it been? An hour? Wow. And they find great. out. They watch you. They watch you. Somebody's watching us on television right now. I don't know. Maybe they're zooming in. Je ne, je ne sais pas. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Randy. Um, I just I think that it would be a good idea to follow up on Phil's suggestion. Um, you know, with a with another new member potentially coming in uh to the select board. Um, you know, when Phil brought up the idea of having uh Vermont League of Cities and Towns come to meet with us and have some discussions around just procedural stuff and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I know I was looking forward to that and and with a with another new member potentially coming in, I think that that's something that um, we should follow through with. Yep. yep. The other thing, uh, the other thing that I would like to be, and we haven't really in actively encouraged. We've mentioned it in the past, but we haven't encouraged it. But the League of Cities and Towns offers all kinds of training for select board members, and we should encourage the new person, whoever they are, to take advantage of those classes, and we should agree to pay for them. Yeah, they're good. I mean, and you always have. I, I I took them when I joined the select board. Yeah. No, no, no. Some people, some people have, and some people have it. But I, I just think. But it's Sarah's going to post this on Front Porch Forum, right, Sarah? You're going to. I'm post going to it. post it. I'm going to post it wide and far. 
Okay. So everybody can, and we'll just, we shouldn't have a special Send letters about of it. interest. Letters of interest by, what is it, tw 7 and 14, is it the 21st? What is it? Was it the 21st, our next meeting? Um, you, can consider, you can consider people then. Yeah. Then we get ready to roll. They'll be able to start in the new fiscal year. Isn't that exciting? DRBs, new select board. I would like to not be the only woman on the board who is not able to review the applicants if we're doing it on the 21st and I'm not around. Yes. yes. Um, would you consider, yes. Are you? will you have email uh, ability when you're out there? Do you want me to just forward the uh, applications as you go along? I know it's a vacation. Yeah, that would be fine. I can forward okay. those as you go along and you can send a letter of uh, response. Sounds good. And those will not be an executive session. Those will you all. Also, be you could also just cancel your triplets. That isn't a problem, is it, for something this important? <laughs> just saying. No, I'm not canceling. No, oh, I'm just teasing you. I'm just teasing you. So, um, yeah, a lot of change. Change is afoot, as they say. But I appreciate your comment, Randy. I, this is the perfect time to be uh, to be doing that. Um. Okay, I think we're all set, unless anybody else has anything. Oh, Phil, Phil. Oh, Phil I'm sorry. See Very quick. Written down right in front of me. That's okay. <laughs> we can have a special oh, meeting. I apologize. Go we, ahead. We can have a special ahead. meeting to talk about. No. Um, I had a call today from the new executive director uh, for CB Fiber. I cannot remember her name, unfortunately, Janelle something. Um, they're in the final stages of design for Middlesex. Yeah. And they have identified an area where they're, I don't know, I, I can't remember what the actual terms are, but they, they need to put in this like basically a junction box. Um, and they have identified an area by the town garage yes. that so they can connect three different loops there. Um, and understood that it was, you know, town land. They sent me a, a map showing, um, sites and would be wanted to know if we would consider giving them an easement to be able to set that junction box basically on town land so that they can connect these three different loops uh, coming in at that point. I told them we had a meeting tonight, you know, it was, wasn't warned, we couldn't take any action, but that uh, I would bring it up. I, you know, I, I thought it was highly likely that, um, we'd be able to work something out. They've got a consultant working with them. And I said, we'd have to have, uh, you know, legal easement language that we would pass by our attorney to, to review and see if that was okay. But um, anyway, it seems to make sense to me that that's something we'd want to support. Isn't there that, isn't there that telephone company box right there? Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Oh. I mean, it would make sense to put it right next yeah. to it. I mean, I don't know what site they're proposing, but I have all that stuff together. It's kind of yeah. off to the side, just as you turn into the driveway to the town. Right. right, I forgot that. Yeah, that, that may be one of the reasons they identified that site anyway. So, that's, yeah. That's Washington Electrics. Um, so that kind of goes with uh, the cooperative. Oh. Mode for that. So, Phil, oh. is there any, is there, um, uh, do you, do you know if they would drop the easement or we would drop the easement? Do you know how that would work? Who would drop the easement? So we got to have an easement recorded in land records. Right. Um, they have a consultant who I believe will drop the easement. Okay. Um, I have her name. I have not had a conversation with her. I thought I would just you know, yep. bring this up tonight and then tomorrow or over the next day, I'll try to connect um, with her and uh, see if I can work out, you know, some more of the details. Because we could, you could just bring the easement to the board, and they could, and the board could approve it. Then we could record it and start on. You could, that would be your up or down on that easement. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yep. I mean, I don't see. Does anybody have any any problems or issues with that conceptually? I certainly don't. Oh. I mean, I'm, I'm all for it. I want to do everything within reason to make yeah. this uh, to make this happen. Yeah. Yeah. It's a logical spot for. It. It in my yard so I can be directly connected to the mothership. I can't think exactly. of Exactly. That's what I said. Oh, you can put it in front of my house. <laughs> so, you know. I'll give him an easement. I can do it really quick. Phil, do you know, 
do you know if there's a, a timeline or anything like that where they expect to release like their plan on wh what areas they intend to hit and, and all that through this phase? Well, as far as Middlesex goes, they're going to hit everything. We. Oui. They're going to um, cover. And in fact, I believe they're going to even overbuild Comcast territory because it makes sense because they got to go through to get to another part. They originally weren't going to do that, but it looks like that's that's going to happen. So competition. Uh, yeah. 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 Is it, so like, are we talking this fall or? That's what I'm hearing. I'll, I'll probably know more after, you know, chatting with these folks on the easement, but if they're, they're looking for easements, they, that to me says they're ready to build. Yeah. Um, they're getting ready to go. Yeah. That looks exciting. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, so, ready to, I'm ready to run down the street with an extension cord to plug my <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, okay. So that sounds okay. Like that's the, good news. That's good I'll, news, Bill, I think. That's, 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 uh, that's, uh, that's sort of the last step before they actually start hanging wire and hooking stuff up. Yeah, yeah if they can get that easement done, we can give it to Halpert. Then we can just put it at, at the next meeting, you know, just as fast as possible. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'll give them a call. I also think it's it's great that, that Waitsfield Telecom is going gonna, is gonna to yeah. manage this. I mean, they are, I can't think of a better organization to do this for for our part of this. They're right. a outfit. well run. Well, and, and I think that Washington Electric Co op, who owns all the poles, okay. is actually going to hang the fiber. Wow. So they own the fiber, they can do the make ready, um, which is just you know having enough space for the cable to run through. And they've, they've been in partnership from fairly early on with CV Fiber. So I think that's the way that's going to go. They're going to they're gonna do that piece. Um, somebody else probably is going to do things like these junk, junction boxes. Um, and then uh, Waysville Telecom is going to be the they'll operator. They'll do yeah. the hookups. Yep. yep. Coming into uh, the real yeah. world. We're going to be in the new world. Oh, geez. Unbelievable. Every every house in Middlesex is going to go up $50,000 in value. Absolutely. Blazing fast. Yeah. Yeah. Cannot wait. Okay. <laughs> Good news. Good news. Okay. Now, okay. Let's say, everyone, I would say, I would say we're adjourned. So, Liz, you will be here. You will be here for the special meeting. Yes or no? No. No. Okay. You're gone on Wednesday. Yep. Yeah. I leave Wednesday. I don't know what time I leave, but I don't want to count on it. No. Okay. Bon voyage. Thanks. Have fun. Fun. Yeah. Bye, everyone. So do Sherry, I let me bring uh, anything to Poland. Do I, to, do I get to drive the Tesla while you're gone? Just, just bring it over to my house. I'll take it's good care of it. It's in Boston. And no. <laughs> Sarah, do you want me to bring anything to Poland? Like, to because, like my daughter or son, they're actually going to be here next week. So there you oh, go. Good. Perfect. Yeah. Don't, get, uh, don't get sick and don't get COVID again. Otherwise, you'll never be able to come home. Believe me. I'm going to get a doctor's note. I think that they can attest that I am, yeah. I don't have to get tested. There you go. You'll yeah. be fine. Yeah, that's actually right. You won't. Yeah. Okay. okay. Bye, everybody. Everyone. Thank you very much. Okay. See ya. Bye. Bye. Bye.